Capsicum spray is meant to be a last line of defence for police before they resort to firearms, something only to be used when an offender poses a real threat. But 7.30 has uncovered extraordinary security footage showing two teenage boys being repeatedly sprayed with capsicum foam because one of them didn't have a valid railway ticket. The Victorian police have launched an internal investigation as a result. Reporter Louise Milligan got a special dispensation to report on this children's court case. It was a cold night on the 7th of June last year at Melbourne's Springvale train station. Two 17-year-old boys planned to catch a train into the inner city. They're seen here on CCTV. We'll call them Stephen and Paul. Stephen didn't have enough money for a ticket. He jumped the turnstiles. It was after that that things got ugly. Anybody who's watching this who's got 17-year-old, 16-year-old children who are out on the streets for whatever purpose should be really concerned. On duty that night were two Protective Service Officers, or PSOs, trained and employed by Victoria Police to protect public safety. The officers stopped Stephen and took his details. Crucially, from that point on, they knew Stephen was just 17 years old. That was when Stephen decided to make a run for it. His friend Paul, who had a valid ticket, followed. The officers gave chase. The boys jumped onto a waiting train. The officers signalled it to stay in the station until they dragged Stephen off and brought him to the ground. Paul ran over and told the officers to get the f off his friend. Paul told his story to 7.30. Well, I was really concerned for my good mate and I could see that he was in distress and the PSOs were handling him pretty rough. That's why I approached them. Paul had not broken any law. He is short and slight. But for some reason, the officers decided to spray him and his friend with capsicum foam. They sprayed the boys several times. In the mayhem, Matthew Sargent even sprayed his own partner. Capsicum spray surely is a method of last resort before you pull out a gun. Oh, I would have thought that capsicum spray is um, life or death, um, uh, certainly harm or not harm. And in this video, obviously these children are, are, are a threat to nobody. In fact, uh, they look to me as if they're being acting in a fairly benign way. My son's just a kid and for all intents and purposes, we, we knew that he didn't do anything wrong. And I could not understand how the PSOs could decide to use capsicum spray just like that as the first option. The third time Paul was foamed, he was mostly off camera, facing the wall with his hoodie up, trying to shield himself from the foam. He turned briefly and was sprayed in his eyes. Just the worst experience you'll ever find. You feel burns all over your eyes, you're pretty much blind. It's the worst experience ever. Paul was charged with assaulting and hindering protective service officers Michael Rice and Matthew Sargent. The officer's version of the incident in sworn evidence differed significantly from the CCTV evidence. The officers said Stephen fell to the ground after a struggle. But here's the CCTV. Stephen fell because of a coordinated trip by both officers. Officer Matthew Sargent said he believed Paul was posing a threat, swinging his arms, attempting to lash out. Here's the train coming into the platform. 7.30 played the video on a mobile phone to Victoria's Commissioner for Children and Young People, Bernie Geary. Now, at this point, they're giving evidence he's swinging his arms. He's not swinging his arms. He's, uh, he's lashing out. <laughs> That's not a lash out. He's a threat. They're saying he's posing a threat. Yeah. He's standing there very calmly, isn't he? In fact, the only one waving his arms about is the officer. Under cross-examination, Officer Matthew Sargent finally admitted his allegations didn't stack up. Do you now agree that your perception was in fact false? Possibly, yes. What was going through your mind as you watched those pictures? Initially I was totally shocked and almost sheer disbelief that something like this could happen. And I could not comprehend 
how or why they would have done something like this. When the court heard this account, the magistrate asked, Why do you deploy capsicum spray if he's got a hood over his face facing the wall? Because he was trying to lash out. So you sprayed him with foam because he was trying to protect himself from foam? Correct. This prompted Paul's barrister, James Anderson, to declare... At that stage, it was just a capsicum spray party. Do you think that your client was posing any safety risk to those protective service officers or anyone else at that station? No. The only risk that has arisen here um, has been a result of the actions of the protective services officers, actions that placed the public in danger, um, my client, his friend and ultimately the officers involved. After the capsicum spraying had ended, Officer Sergeant called an ambulance for his partner who was having difficulty breathing. The teenage boy Paul was also finding it hard to breathe, but no one thought to call an ambulance for him. When quizzed about this by Paul's barrister, Officer Sergeant replied, I was concerned for my partner more than the boy. My safety comes first, then my partner's then the offenders. Victoria Police's procedural manual on aerosols says capsicum spray must only be deployed where the officer believes there's a reasonable threat of violence or serious physical confrontation. It should not be used in situations of passive resistance. Unfortunately there's been an awareness, a creeping awareness that children and young people are uh, copying capsicum spray in too many circumstances just to gain their compliance, stop them running off for example. So it's being used as the first line of defence rather than the last line? Well, not even a line of defence, actually, a line of um, attack often. When the spraying was over that night in June, police arrived. They held Paul's face down, a boot pinning him to the ground, and applied handcuffs behind his back. That really shocked me, that, you know, they would handcuff a young kid just like that in such a situation. Obviously, he was in distress. He, he had difficulty breathing. Police gave the boys so-called aftercare. That involved police tipping cleaners mop buckets of water over their heads for 20 to 30 minutes to flush out their eyes. It spread from just my eyes into my whole entire body because the water would mix with the chemical and it would go all over my body and I would feel the burning cessation everywhere, yeah. And out of 10, what was the pain? 10. The word aftercare seemed to imply care, whereas to me in this situation, taking a janitor's pail of water and just douching them in the middle of a platform in winter when it's freezing cold, that didn't seem any care for their dignity. It was 10.8 degrees that night in Springvale. These are photographs of Paul taken in his wet and foam-stained clothes. Meanwhile, the officer who had been foamed, Michael Rice, was escorted to a sink to flush his eyes. I mean, to be honest, I was angry, and but more so really emotionally distressed because I could see my son, how could it escalate to such a point where, you know, he's treated worse than a common criminal. The magistrate acquitted Paul of all charges last month, saying there was no evidence that he intended to assault or hinder the officers. I have to say, I have real problems with the deployment of foam to Paul. There is nothing in his behaviour or body language which justifies him being sprayed. In an earlier case, the other boy, Stephen, admitted fare evasion and completed a diversionary program. 7.30 showed the CCTV to Victoria Police Command. Assistant Commissioner, the inspector representing Victoria Police at the Children's Court described this incident as not your organisation's finest hour. Do you agree with that sentiment? When I saw the footage, it did raise the question with me, was the threat there? Was the force proportionate? That's why I, I've asked for a review to be undertaken by our subject matter experts, the Centre for Training, Operational Tactics and Support, the review is expected to take six weeks. Please, uh, we would be asking police uh, to acknowledge that this is bad practice. Uh, and it's, it's extraordinary that they should sit in court and um, 
and be so in denial of, of uh, such bad practice. Louise Milligan with that report.